This video is brought to you by Connext. Connext is a cross-chain protocol that lets you build cross-chain applications and experiences in a secure way. Rob and I really enjoyed their tech because they don't add any new security assumptions on top of the connected change as they don't rely on an external validator set or an oracle. Security is definitely paramount in DeFi, so we're excited to work with Connext. Hope you enjoy this video. What's going on guys? Welcome back, Roll Up Nation, to another prominent Layer 2 interview today. We're sitting at Epic Layer 2 event hosted by Epic Web 3 here in Paris. I'm with my buddy Nico from Tyco. Uh, Tyco is a ZK roll-up based uh, architecture project uh, and they have some really interesting things launching. We've had a lot of really cool roll-up interviews today and they are keeping coming. So I'm going to pass it over to, to Miko, have him introduce himself, his role at Tyco and um, the overall infrastructural design and what's going on at Tyco. So cheers. Yeah, cheers, Andy, and, and first of all, thanks for having me, and it was quite funny. We just found each other like a few hours before this on Twitter randomly, so uh, yeah, happy that we just could make, make it happen. Um, yeah, so my name is Miko. I work at Tyco. Um, Tyco is uh, Ethereum Layer 2 ZK Rollup, and I'm leading the, the community uh, efforts at, at Tyco. And um, yeah, essentially, um, Tyco uh, is uh, world's first type 1 ZK EVM. So what does it mean? So we want to be as close to Ethereum, both uh, tech-wise and I would also say values-wise. So a general purpose uh, scaling solution uh, for Ethereum and um, and also like one, one unique aspect and we can go Andy more into details here is, is that we are decentralized from day one. Uh, we just, just today this morning launched the Alpha 4 uh, testnet and uh, yeah, uh, the, the testnet, uh, Alpha, Alpha 3 testnet has been now live for uh, about six weeks and we have uh, anybody can join permissionlessly to um, be a Tyco node operator and propose blocks or proof blocks, so generate those ZK proofs. So that's quite a um, unique uh, aspect uh, of Tyco. So essentially we don't have centralized sequencer um, and we, we, um, we start being decentralized from the day one. So yeah, type one decentralized, those are some of the uh, main, main differentiators I would say uh, regarding Tyco in, in the broader uh, ZK rollup um, world. Sweet, yeah, um, very interesting uh, design choices, right, to, to do ZK EVM. I think um, it's kind of the best of both worlds currently, right? You get the, uh, the mix of uh, the EVM infrastructure and you also get uh, the ZK tech backing, mm -hmm. um, you know, that high throughput, cheap fees, uh, proving, proving mechanisms. So uh, very interesting to hear more kind of about the, those design choices. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you, you were uh, quite excited to hear about this Alpha V4 testnet. Uh, and also, in addition to that, these inception layers. Mm -hmm. Now, recently, uh, or actually earlier today, I was talking to Jordy from ZKVM, Polygon ZKVM, that is, and we spoke more about um, this, this I, I, I idea of scaling to the nth layer power. And basically what this means is, right, we, we can stack layer twos on top of layer twos, making layer threes, and, and having these layer threes roll up into a layer two. Very, very cheap, very, very fast, and a lot of, a lot of use cases, app-specific roll-ups, et cetera. So walk us through the uh, inception layer, where that name come from, what does that mean, and how is Tyco planning to really scale to the nth power? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question, and, and, and yeah, we just released it this morning. So inception layers, they are layer trees. So essentially deploying Tyco on top of Tyco. So when you want, when you want to have scalability, you can use you know Tyco L2. When you want to have like a really low cost, uh, you can deploy an app chain. So L3. So that's that's inception layer. And and yeah, uh, now that you asked about where the name comes from, it actually comes from uh, the movie Inception. So <laughs> yeah. Essentially, um, for the people who haven't seen the movie, um, Leonardo DiCaprio and other, other famous folks. So you, you can uh, see dreams inside dreams. So uh, the, the name comes from there. So um, layers on top of layers. And yeah, we, we believe that the app chains um, might turn out to be a big part of the 
uh, blockchain future. And especially for certain verticals, if you think about gaming, social, there's a plenty of transactions, right? So you just need to um, have low, low cost, like really low cost infrastructure for, for those verticals. And also like going further, if you, if you think about a uh, few years ahead, uh, we believe that there's, there, there will be a lot of app chains out there, but also after a few years, uh, many of the app chains will kind of become obsolete. And at that point, there will be a, a big improvement. Like if you would, let's say like, you know, th there's a game and kind of like becomes obsolete and people want to take the assets out, right? If you would exit to layer one from layer two, right? Uh, it would be really expensive. But if you exit the assets from layer three to layer two, it's actually much, much, much do more doable. So that's like one very concrete long-term benefit of, of app chains. But, um, but obviously, you know, it's early days. Uh, we're also, you know, uh, experimenting, testing it out, you know, putting it out there for community to um, uh, try it out and different apps to, to build on it. So yeah, we're excited to see how everything goes. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I just keep having this idea in my head of scaling to the nth power. And right now, I mean, I think rollups as a whole, layer twos are fine, right? Even if every transaction that happened on layer one was ported over to, um, I think, what is it? Maybe we have eight rollups that are, you know, have significant traction currently. If those were all, uh, if all those transactions were on, on layer twos, it would still be cheap and still would be manageable, right? But then when we start to scale that again exponentially, um, you know, then we start to see the use cases for having an order book per, uh, perpetual swap exchange just on one layer three, having a game that doesn't necessarily require as much composability just on one layer three. And so these kind of use cases really they open up new possibilities for why layer three should exist. Um, kind of, how can our community get involved in the current uh, testnet? Uh, what does that look like for dApps, uh, for users? How can we get over to Tyco ecosystem, um, you know, and, and be a part of that as a whole? Yeah, uh, yeah thanks for the question. There's a, there was a, a plenty, plenty of angles. So, well, if we start from users, just, you know, anybody out there listening, um, you can obviously, you know, come on board and, and test Tyco, go do a couple of swaps, you know, bridge some testnet tokens and do... Where specifically? Yeah, and where specifically, actually we have our um, Galaxy campaign live uh, for about a week now. So that is an easy way, like step-by-step -step in, uh, introduction. We've done it a quite different way. So there's also an education component and we, you know, we encourage people to read Vitalik's blog post on ZK EVM and, you know, uh, actually learn the fundamentals. Um, so that's an easy step-by-step -step way to just try out the basic things and we'll be expanding that. Um, so that's kind of like from the, the very basic thing, how you can get involved. And then going a bit further, if you, if you're even a little bit technical, you don't need to be like, um, you know, hardcore hacker, you can whip up your own Tyco node so you can become a blog proposer and, uh, and kind of, yeah, join the network, uh, help to secure the network, decentralize the network. And, um, I guess the next step. On that front, uh, and it actually it, it does require quite a lot of hardware, is to become block prover. So also a Tyco node operator, but generating those CK proofs. So um, so that'll that'll be a little bit more um, yeah challenging effort, uh, but it's also something you can look into if you have uh, fast hardware. Um, then from the DAP side of things, if you want to build something on Tyco, well first of all, um, I would say Tyco provides the provides superior developer experience. And why is that? Because you can just take your Solidity code, put it on Tyco, and it works out of the box. Yeah, it's huge. And uh, and obviously, you know, many many rollups are like language level compatible, right? So technically, this works on all rollups. But because we are Type One, and we we replicate the Ethereum yellow paper um, in its entirety, um, there is no edge cases. Um, there is no uh, requirement for uh, re audits. And basically, it's kind of like, you know, cognitive free experience for the developer, right? You just, you know, yep. go there, deploy it, and it works. And um, and now, a um, few days ago, we also launched our grants program. So that's something that the uh, developers, you know, go ahead uh, on, on tyco.xyz and, and our blog there. There's more details. We've kept it really open-ended. There are some suggestions that, you know, you, you can consider. But 
uh, but you can send any application and, and we will consider it. And it's not, not only tech, there's even room for, let's say, educational um, content uh, that you can propose an idea and, and, and we'll, we'll consider. It's a bit different in a sense that um, right now we actually don't have the kind of like a staple coin or a traditional money component. We have we are giving out um, uh, the Tyco uh, pre uh, token generation event tokens um, to the um, to the grantees. Um, we will introduce also the kind of staple coin component. People need to you know buy food and pay rent, right? Um, but it, it is I would say quite uh, exciting opportunity and quite different from many other protocols. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the uh, token allocation uh, incentive alignment, right? Mm -hmm. I think that that's very important for all grantees. And I, you know, you know any devs that are looking, uh, or any projects that are, are listening that are looking to port over to have an early mover advantage to Tyco, right? There's an opportunity there for grants uh, and also to have that early mover advantage, get some, uh, get some allocation uh, as well. So um, most definitely um, an opportunity and, you know, being early to ZK EVMs, being early to all L2s has been of a major benefit to me and to many others. And so I can't see this being much different. Kind of as we wrap up here with some closing thoughts, um, you know, where can our, com our community find you best? I know you guys have a Galaxy campaign, um, Discord, Twitter. Um, yeah. And any closing thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, people can find us on Taiko, so T A I K O dot X Y Z, and our Twitter handle is the same, Taiko X Y Z. Um, yeah, um, you can find the Discord link over there. Um, feel free to join. We have a very supportive community. So you know, if you want to set up the node, uh, you can ask ask help from there, and um, that's the best way to get started. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Andy. Cheers, Miko. Looking forward to seeing the development, truly. I mean, uh, it feels like in quarter three, quarter four, it's like roll-up mania. And I'm very mm -hmm. excited to see how Tyco is going to co uh, compete, collaborate, and flourish in that ecosystem. So uh, props for, for, for the team. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Roll-up Nation, another interview with some Chad roll-up builders. We love to see it. Thank you, Miko. Thanks a lot, Andy. This was amazing.